Here's a quote from the end of, of one of their investor presentations, uh, which again, I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I, I, I'll, I'll let the quote speak for itself. We hope that when technology meets biology, life uh, finds a way. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! The, 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 the hubristic genetic engineering company with its mammalian operations, funded by DARPA, has quoted Jurassic Park. I yeah, it took me a minute, but yeah, that is fucking Jurassic Park, isn't it? <laughs> <Yeah>. That's. <laughs> Uh, an enterprise Christ. which it's both this terrifying and also very annoying well, th- what's funny about it is both that it's like it's incredibly lame to quote jurassic park but also that that's an example of how badly it can go <laughs> like that's mm. like the new prime minister quoting starship troopers <laughs> like it just doesn't like in my administration so to use citizenship. we're going to kill bugs <laughs> like, in the conservative party everyone <laughs> fights and everyone drops <laughs> that's uh, right uh, uh, sorry alex you were saying Oh no no! I I didn't have anything else. <laughs> All right, <laughs> um, just and, like Jurassic Park, holy shit! Yeah, yeah. I, actually, I, Alice, when you did that, that was quite a plausible Theresa May. <laughs> I could really see her saying that. <laughs> um, yeah. So this is. This is Ginkgo, and if this isn't all bullshit, then this is not the last we're going to hear from them. But on the other hand, hmm. because of its like insane um, projections of what how it can grow uh, revenue, because of its crazy valuation. Because it's gone public via SPAC, those to me all suggest, hopefully, uh, this is just going to be some idiots playing around with the money of investors that could not be put profitably elsewhere, and Bill Gates dreaming of copywriting the concept of an egg. So, so we're rooting for this to be scam, a scam. 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 Um, big money, big money, big money. No successes, no successes. <laughs> um, but no, so I, I want to move on to our, our, our second sort of uh, topic of discussion today, which almost could be like portrayed as tangentially related to the first, which is that, um, uh, Alex, I wanted to invite you uh, to my uh, newly constructed pool. Yeah, what are you doing later? Where I'll be having uh, chicken wings, we'll be sawing some lumber. Um, and sitting on my new furniture, uh, and you can get there in a rental car with a microchip in it. How does that sound to you? <laughs> that sounds impossible. <laughs> There's nothing there. God, I wish I could eat a big plate of chicken yeah. tendies right now. <laughs> maybe like li- liberally drenched in palm oil, uh, mm. maybe with some coffee or mm-hmm. wine. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good bouquet. Yeah. A good flavor palette. We're having a really fun time figuring out that, like, just shoveling money into the internet uh is maybe not the best long-term way to sustain uh economic growth that kind of actually works it's really what fun. come no come on <laughs> I would, right, no. What, what is what is happening why are we talking about yeah. palm oil and lump wait, wait wait what's the internet yeah <laughs> so there is a uh God, just a whole range of shortages all over the United States right now in all kinds of ways. Like basically lumber prices are up a ton from last year. Mm-hmm. They've come off a little bit from the high. Um, rental car prices are up a lot. Uh, airline ticket prices are up a lot. Like basically last year, everyone cut capacity like in manufacturing and, and basically like all over the place. And uh, now things are opening up and these companies are like, what, you actually want this stuff? <laughs> like yeah. last year you didn't want it. What the hell is going on? Yeah. We're playing hot um, and cold. Yeah. Hmm. So like in, in the Soviet Union, which was bad, right? This was called a shortage, <laughs> yeah. right? Because <laughs> there was, there was an ideological imperative that you couldn't raise prices when stuff became unattainable. So you just couldn't have it. Mm-hmm. We, on the other hand, have just like raised prices to the point where most people cannot afford things suddenly, mm-hmm. and they just cannot be bought. But that's not a shortage because um, supply and demand, baby. Yeah, be- because yeah. That, because a shortage is what you do when you're Venezuela. Supply and demand, baby, is what you do when you're America or the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just just be a rational consumer. Travel 500 miles and and buy your your palm yeah, oil be the or your, your coffee yeah. there. Yeah. So I, I have a list of everything that I is. I would walk 500 miles to engage in commodity arbitrage. <laughs> <laughs> I have. I love when Kevin Bridges joined yeah. the proclaimers. Yeah. That's uh, you ha- pal, how much you selling this palm oil for? 
Uh, so I have a list. What if I were to stab you? <laughs> I have a list of all of the shortages facing the U.S., but many are global, so they're also facing like Britain, for example, oh, too. Good. Oh no! Um, computer chips is the big one. That's the one you see most of. Um, yeah, graphics cards too, yeah. because people are buying them up to fill uh, shipping containers full of them to uh, mine Bitcoin. Shipping containers is another one. I don't actually have that here, but shipping <laughs> containers is a big one. Um, chicken, uh, nappies, tampons, yeah, toilet paper. You, you need all of those for a Bitcoin yeah. farm. Uh, yeah. cars... Chickens were like, we're not, we're not breeding. There's no one's eating us, so we're just gonna, we're gonna knock it on the head. <laughs> uh, cars, petrol, plastics, palm oil, lumber, and um, uh, Alex, you mentioned there was a big spike on that. I recommend there's a, a couple good odd lots episodes about that one if you want to go deep into the lumber. Furniture, by extension, from Join lumber. me in the lumber. Uh, pork... <laughs> yeah, check out my favorite lumber podcast. Uh, pork bellies, coffee, olive oil, wine. Pork bellies, wait, so not, not pork, but just the well, belly. Pork bellies is what it gets traded all, all as. Of the stuff, oh, all of the right, stuff right, that, right. like, yep. the guys in trading places were yep. investing in the futures of. Yep, correct, have, yes. Do no longer have futures. <laughs> no, they have passed only. They are history now. Uh, mm -hmm. It passed from the discipline of economics into history. Uh, chlorine, uh, labor, which we talked about before. Corn, which is astonishing for the U.S. And then oxygen, which is bad. Oh, that's really bad. Yeah. I need that. Have you ever felt like the economic collapse that goes broadly unremarked, but just immediately led to the collapse of the Soviet Union within like six months? It's just kind of happening. I mean, Alex, I'd sort of defer to you on that one. What's your What is your opinion? I don't know. It's uh, it's a tough question because, like, I feel like a lot of people are blaming. I'm sure you guys talked about this, but a lot of people are blaming like labor shortages for everything. So they're like, oh, well, we'd love to like have these uh, semiconductors, but it's a labor shortage. Right. But like really that kind of stuff is just like um, the car makers thought that no one was going to want cars. So they like cut their orders and now they're like, oh, my God, we need more. And the suppliers are like, uh, why? What? You know, it, it sort of came out of nowhere. <laughs> Excellent. And, and, um, and there are also other like systemic causes as well, which is like, for example, um, all what because China and the US went out of lockdowns at different times, um, Chinese factory production ramped up. And so the US was ordering sort of lots and lots of shipping containers full of stuff. And so all the shipping containers went from where all the stuff is to where all the stuff was needed. But because the US had no factories um, producing stuff as well, the shipping container is all just built up in like the port of LA or like Long Beach or whatever. Yeah. And then none of all of the shipping containers were all concentrated at the place where none of the commerce was and all of where the manufacturing was had none of the shipping containers because we have an amazing economy. We're basically failing a big game of Factorio. <laughs> More or less. And I think it's as much as someone like a uh, cl close confidant and friend of um, of Jeffrey Epstein, Larry Summers, might like to say mm -hmm. something like, oh, well, it's the labor shortage. It's Joe Biden's overspending. Uh, he's overheating the economy. There's too much money. It's causing inflation. It's like, well, no, actually, like the, the sort of recklessness of the profit motive, you might say, has constant has made it impossible to ship anything in from China, which, by the way, why is all the stuff made there? <laughs> but where all the stuff is made. And so now you can't get anything. And that's like one of the many sort of of the complex causes of what's causing there to be tons and tons of shortages in the economy. Yeah. And the other reason that there's a shortage of shipping containers is they're all being stacked on top of each other in shortage to make bars that tossers <laughs> can go to. I fucking, oh my God. That, that's why it's doubly my offensive. My God. It's doubly offensive that shitty stuff happens in shipping containers because these could be, there's a shortage of them. They could be profitably used. <laughs> yeah, it's great. But no, I need to put an axe throwing bar in here. Fuck off. Yeah, we should send Frank Sabotka around to every yeah. bar in Shoreditch <laughs> and uh, just murder just, people. Just, just, just very captured by the sound of an axe hitting the side of a shipping container a bunch of times. <laughs> but, um, so, uh, yeah. Alex, I sort of go, go back to you here as, as well, right? Part of this is also. I think anyway, is the sort of prevalence of a lot of people deciding that just in time manufacturing means we don't have to hold any inventory. I don't know what what is your what do you think about that idea? Yeah, I mean I think that definitely makes sense. Um it's funny because like talking about, like you said, the sort of Larry Summers inflation view, like I always think about like if that was like really a big issue, like why do people get pissed off or not get more pissed off about like surge pricing? Because mm -hmm. like that's basically what this is, right? Yeah. Like it's like you guys said, it's not really a shortage. It's just fucking surge pricing mm. because, you know, you have a lot of people who want a thing and like not a lot of that stuff available. Yeah. And if you actually look at what's driving you, because there is inflation happening in the U. And again, there is inflation happening in the U.S. right now. Is it such a bad thing is even debatable? 
right? Because you know a lot of it do, do, yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. It's the same as it's the same as like we can't raise prices because this is the Soviet Union. We can't do inflation because we are also in the grips of like a an inflexible ideological hold here. Yeah, because if we allow any inflation to happen, then it will be the seventies again, and then they're going to have to retool all the factories to make the bell bottom yeah, well, pants. Like, I, 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 again, like the, the the Soviet Union, but shit and expensive, right? The, the the Politburo of essentially like five MMT guys mm -hmm. are just like, no, we absolutely cannot have any inflation <laughs> at any cost, and so therefore we're just going to continue to like see uh, photos of restaurants that are like closed because nobody wants to work, mm. uh, you know. And we're just going to try and like we're going to try and squeeze people a little bit harder to try and like extract more surplus value, but like. We're not gonna think about any other solutions because we can't, because that's outside of our, our ideology.